All right, we got through the pros and cons of prepaid phones, and now we move on to part four of this series, the cons of having a contract phone, with all information provided by AndroidAuthority.com. But before I get started, let me remind those watching that I'm not here to make a decision for you. These videos serve as a foundation of what type of phone to get and to help get a basic idea of what you need. The first con of having a contract phone is the price. Okay, let's clarify something here. The phone you purchase when you sign up for a contract might be cheaper, but in reality, it's more expensive. What I mean is, sure you pay for the price of the phone itself, let's say 97 cents, but let's not forget you also have to pay for the data, the number of devices, and so on. In addition, the first bill after activation will be the most expensive, but the good news is it's only one time. As you continue your commitment, the bill will be lowered to a steadier bill. The next con is there is less freedom. This means once you sign on the dotted line, you're stuck for the next two years. Although some people have managed to pay off their contracts sooner. Oh, contract! Why did you do this to me? <laughs> the third con is there is a smaller selection of phones to choose from. This is a gray area. While prepaid phones give you a little bit more freedom, there are catches, as mentioned in Part 3. With a contract phone, however, you don't get that luxury. The final con of contract phones are the fees associated with each. Where do I start with this? There are activation fees, rate fees, access fees, and more fees than you can shake a stick at. Prepaid phones have fewer fees, but they're mostly taxes. Some prepaid companies don't have fees as they're part of the price. With that said and done, stick around for part 5 when I wrap this debate up and give my thoughts on which way to go.